I mean, I'm getting more relaxed and used to talking to people at each table. So, <laughs> so um, like, have you worked on uh, any like DC animated films before, or is this your very first one? Uh, I have. I wrote. Uh, I wrote the script for Batman versus Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, so this is actually. Oh, thank you. So yeah, this is my second DC animated movie, and also my second uh, teams of five characters fighting each other movie. <laughs> So how did that movie prepare you for this one? How did it like kind of, you know, the experience Uh, well, so the, they were pretty different experiences because Batman Ninja Turtles was adapted from a comic. Uh, so for that one, the, what I did is I started with the comic and we went from there. This one is an original story, um, but I think the biggest, I think the biggest thing that I took away from that was I wanted, in, in Batman Ninja Turtles, they do fight, but it's because of a misunderstanding. Um, like the, the circumstances convince them that they are enemies for a moment and they have a fight. Uh, I wanted, right from the start in this movie, I wanted it to be a more explicit, like, they have to fight each other. It's not, it, they're not just being jerks, they're not just being jerks and they think the other one is a bad guy, like, a, a, someone comes in and says, no, you guys, you have to fight, we're keeping score, there's gonna be winners and losers. I wanted there to be, like, basically a tournament section of the movie. So do you prefer to do original stories or do you prefer doing adaptations? Oh, it's the, I like both. Um, it's, it's a different experience, but they're both really rewarding. Uh, the nice thing about an original story is it's a little, I would say it's a little easier to figure out an original story because there's no, there's no guardrails. You can just do whatever you want. But what that means is it's hard to make sure it's good. It's easy to fig it's easy to come up with an original story. It's hard to come up with an original story that's any good. With the adaptation, you have that nice safety net of like, well, we already know this works. We already know people like this. If we don't mess it up, people will probably like the adaptation. With an original story, it's nice because you can do whatever you want, but maybe what you want to do is bad. You don't know. You're just one person. Uh, Marley, what causes uh, the multiverse part to kind of cross over in this story? What causes it? Yeah. Uh, the Trigons. Now that you've done a crossover between Batman and the Ninja Turtles and the Teen Titans and the Teen Titans Go, what about a crossover with Masters of the Universe and the Justice League? Because that was a comic. Book. That was a comic. I mean, they've done. A, I mean, if we look at things, there's been comics of the one I'd want to do is Archie versus Punisher. Right. The <laughs> best, the best comics crossover that has ever happened. They also did what Batman versus Elmer Fudd just recently. That would be really fun. Uh, like, but, but yeah. like the Ninja Turtles are not even a WBDC property, so yeah, I no, feel I mean, like if we can get that done, we can get the Master of the Universe done. Too. I mean, I have I have no inside information on any of this, but yeah, I agree with you. In a in a world where we have Batman versus Ninja Turtles, there's no reason they couldn't figure out Master of the Universe or Power Rangers Justice League. I think everything. Oh, yeah. I would say everything's on the table. We live in a crazy world where uh, insane things are happen every day. Well, there's doing again where I think the Power Rangers and Ninja Turtles. Are yeah, yeah. So, um, like, like crossovers and multiverses are kind of a, a current theme in superhero properties. I mean, yeah. the MCU, Into the Spider Verse, and like, as you would say, you know, Batman in the next years. Now you have two guys whose chance go. Was that? I don't want to suggest that that was a trend that was being chased, but was that like the idea, like, oh, these are these are resonating with fans. Yeah, you know what, I actually, I for me personally, I do have a good answer for that, which is, as a fan of comic books, you know, I read, I read Marvel vs. DC, yeah. I read, uh, you know, I read, uh, obviously, Crisis on Infinite Earths, um, uh, you know, Archie vs. Punisher, like, these kind of multiverse crossovers have been going on in the comics, like, since when it, Crisis on Two Earths, ever since the Justice Society and uh, the Justice League met. Um, so I think what it is, is, like, I remember years ago, I pitched a Teen Titans episode, a Teen Titans Go episode, where I was like, oh, what if they, uh, you know, they go to Earth 3, and they meet the evil Teen Titans, they go, you know, you Robin with a goatee, that'd be funny, right? And I remember at the time, they were like, well, I don't know, non-comic book fans are kind of confused by that stuff. It's too, like, people understand time travel, but the multiverse stuff confuses people. I don't think we want to go in that direction. So what I think, I don't think it's that we're chasing a trend, it's that the floodgates have been opened. Right. Like, people who grew up with comics have been wanting to tell these stories the entire time, and people used to be worried that they were too weird for the mainstream audiences, and I think once these big movies prove that audiences can handle it and that they love it, everyone's like, awesome, because we have all these stories we've wanted to tell the whole time, and now we can.
Well, there's also like there at this moment four shows with Dick Grayson. There's Titans, I know. Teen Titans, uh, Go, Young Justice. Um, yeah, and this, this one brings back to, to, uh, Dick Grayson as well. So like, it is interesting. Like, no one's gonna argue which one's the true Dick version of Dick Grayson, but like, you have to keep that in mind when you're writing. Like, you know, who is this character? Oh, definitely. How different he is from one of the well, especially I mean, in this movie, I think you know at the end of the day. Both the Teen Titans Go are, you know, their designs are based on the designs from Teen Titans. Yeah. It's the same voice actors playing them in both. They are definitely distinct characters, but they have a lot in common. And so one of the challenges and or sort of like one of the goals of the movie is to really lean into like, okay, what is really different about Teen Titans Go Cyborg versus Teen Titans Cyborg? And let's make those differences as pronounced as possible so they can bounce off each other. Or not. I mean, uh, one of the fun things about having five characters is each character basically reacts to their doppelganger in a slightly different way. Uh -huh. uh, like the two Robins are pretty instantly uh, annoyed slash competitive with each other. Um, the two Starfires just get along. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the two Beast Boys, I think, uh, are a little more odds at first, but they definitely have a lot of common ground once they get to know each other. Uh, the two Ravens just wish this wasn't happening. Uh, <laughs> they don't have a problem with each other, but the whole situation's not, not for them. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think... Uh, it is kind of funny. I think the two characters that naturally dislike each other the most are the two Dick Graysons, and it's probably because they're not that different. I would say Teen Titans Dick Grayson and Teen, Ti Teen Titans Go. Teen Titans Go Dick Grayson is just Dick Grayson with all of his worst impulses unleashed. Right. Like, all of, all of the insecurities and, uh, and bad, bad tendencies that Teen Titans Dick Grayson does have, Teen Titans Go Grayson just has no filter and just does them. But they're all in there, and right. he see, and he, you know, the the serious Robin sees sees his flaws in the little Robin and doesn't like them. Was it a challenge to put the Teen Titans Go in an actual fight and not maybe running around being silly and stuff so much? Or uh, it would have been a challenge if we didn't have Jeff Mendicow as the as the producer director of this because Jeff is an absolute master of taking sort of cartoony characters and doing incredibly badass action sequences with them. Um, and so yeah, if, if it was if it was anybody else, I might have been worried about it. But I knew that I knew that I could I knew I could write a scene where the Teen Titans Go Titans had to be cool too and that they would pull it off no problem. Because um, part of the thing about also the other thing with the, the Teen Titans Go Titans is it's not that they're not good at being superheroes, it's that they don't really want to. Like, if, the, if they decide they want to beat someone up, they're good at beating people up. They're not bad at using their powers. They just don't take things seriously. They're just not interested. Uh, it's much more of a, uh, a personality. That it's, a, it's a personality flaw, not a, uh, an ability flaw. Right. So, which, so which set of doppelgangers was the most fun for you to write? Uh, the two cyborgs. Uh, the first, when they first asked me to do this project, um, uh, you know, spoiler alert, but they meet some other versions of the Teen Titans later in the movie, and the first scene I came up with was Teen, Tit was Teen Titans Go Cyborg seeing an even more serious cyborg and being like, no, that's the serious cyborg. You're cartoony just like me. And uh, that dynamic was, I knew that was going to be really funny. And uh, yeah, I came up with that. That was the very first scene I wrote in my head when they asked me to do this project. Uh, I knew it was going to be really fun to have the cyborgs bounce off each other. And it, and it was. Hopefully everyone likes it. Yeah. Thank you so much.